Welcome back everybody. Today I have a little bit of a different first impressions video for you. Chrono Cross the Radical Dreamers Edition just came out on Nintendo Switch and other platforms on April 7th, and I've put about 7 hours in so far. I've been very excited for this one since I never got the chance to play it on the original release because I did not have a PlayStation at the time. I have, however, played Chrono Trigger on the Super Nintendo back in the day, and more recently on Steam. I consider, as I think many people do, Chrono Trigger to be the best JRPG on the SNES. And I know a lot of people consider Chrono Cross to be the greatest JRPG of all time. So is Chrono Cross truly that good? Will a Chrono Trigger fan enjoy it? Let's find out. Now while I have never played Chrono Cross, I have watched a few videos about it and how it relates to Chrono Trigger in the past, though it's been at least a couple of years ago. While I don't remember many of the details, I do know that Chrono Cross is not a direct sequel to Chrono Trigger, and while Cross does contain references to people and things from Trigger, it tells its own story. Anyone coming into Cross from playing Chrono Trigger should keep that in mind and temper your expectations. With that said, the story in Cross is excellent so far. Just a short time into the game, Surge, our main character and protagonist, will find himself transported to a world where he no longer exists. In this world, he died at the age of seven. This sets up an interesting parallel world situation. While exploring this strange alternate reality, Chrono Trigger fans will begin to see some of the first signs that connect the game's story, Chrono Trigger's story that is, to this one. I'm not going to spoil anything, but needless to say, if you've played Chrono Trigger, I think you will be able to appreciate the story here better. It isn't necessary that you've played Trigger, but I think some of the story may make more sense to you faster if you have. The beginning of the story sets up a lot of questions and intrigue about what the heck is happening in this world, and I love a game that does this well. This intrigue keeps me engaged in the story and anxious to see what comes next. So far, the story is shaping up to be an excellent cacophony of mystery, desperation, confusion, and revelation that I do not want to miss. Before I move on to gameplay, I'd like to ask that if you like this video so far, please hit that like button and maybe leave a comment about why you're excited to play or replay Chrono Cross. Please try to avoid any spoilers though, thanks. Moving on to gameplay, does it stack up? A great story can be ruined by terrible gameplay that just makes you want to throw your controller through a wall. But no worries here, the gameplay in Cross is fantastic, even considering its age. I know that quality of life improvements have been added to the game, but since I did not play the original release, I can't really speak to those. One thing I think was added here was the ability to speed up or slow down the game. I think this was an unlock for New Game Plus in the original, but here you get to start with it from the beginning. You also have the option to turn off combat encounters in the world, though I wouldn't recommend doing this too often unless you find yourself underleveled. I imagine this too was not a feature of the original, but if you know more about these features, please let me know in the comments. But anyway, the exploration aspect of the game will remind you of Chrono Trigger as the look and feel is similar. You will explore areas and dungeons whose monsters all appear on the map, no random battles, and you will find treasure chests that the way to isn't always apparent. You will have to move around the area into different screens and back again to get some of these. The game does make you think if you want to get these chests, and it also contains hidden secrets that are satisfying to find. This is an old school RPG, so exploring in towns and talking to everyone you find is essential. Many NPCs will give you hints on how to complete certain objectives or clues as to where to go next. I know many modern gamers may find this tedious, but it was par for the course in the late 90s and early 2000s. I like experiencing an old style RPG like this where you aren't just given a to-do list, but really have to figure out where to go and how to get there. This really just adds another puzzle to the game and it is really satisfying when you figure it out. The battles. Oh, the battles. I was happily surprised to see a unique battle system here that I haven't experienced before. That's not to say that some other game may have used a similar thing, but of the RPGs that I've played, I haven't seen a system quite like the one used here. Admittedly, I had expected something similar to Chrono Trigger's active battle system, but Cross has a turn-based system with a surprising amount of tacticality involved. I haven't fully grasped the system yet, but I had the gist of it and can use it well enough. Each character has a limited amount of stamina which is used to attack and cast magic. When you attack with your weapon, you are given three options and their percentage chance to hit. These are essentially light, medium, and heavy attacks. It is easiest to hit with a light attack, but each successful strike increases your chance to hit with all three types. Casting magic will use all your remaining stamina 
and defending or having other characters attack will replenish it. Your spells, or elements as this game calls them, have a unique system around them as well. You essentially get spell slots as you level up, and these can be filled with the appropriate level elements. You can't slot an element in a slot lower than its level, but you can slot it in a higher slot, which will give you a damage boost similar to the way it works in D&D, if you're familiar with that. However, you can only use each element once per battle, and when you use it, you will use element points equal to the element's level. These points can be replenished by doing standard attacks with your weapon. Finally, each character has an innate element color associated with them. For instance, Surge's element color is white and Kid's is red. Certain element colors are stronger against others, and this is where this innate color comes into play. From what I can tell, the colors relate to certain elemental types like red for fire, blue for water, yellow for earth I guess, but that also includes lightning. I haven't quite figured out the different element colors and how they affect each other yet, but that goes back to this is an old game and it doesn't hand out explanations of everything on a gold platter for you. If you don't want to figure it out on your own, at least we have YouTube now to show you. So this aspect doesn't really bother me because I knew to expect this from a remaster of an old title. The combat system is deep and complex, more so than I had expected. I have very much enjoyed using this system and learning its ins and outs as I play. I always appreciate a system that makes me think tactically rather than just spam attack A because it's the most powerful. Moving on to the graphics, they stand out even for an older game. With games like Triangle Strategy and Octopath Traveler recently reintroducing us to that pixelated Square Enix style of the past, these graphics do not look so out of place on the modern game market. Of course we have remastered graphics here which improves upon the original, but they are still the original textures just rezzed up. If you prefer to play with the original graphics though, that option is available, along with options for original, full, or zoomed screen sizes. I prefer playing in full screen mode with remastered graphics, but I did check out the other options just to see them. I like it when these remasters give you these options. The graphical style though is reminiscent of Chrono Trigger in a lot of ways, but still unique. All the environments are beautifully rendered and the mixture of 3D characters on a 2D environment gives that unique feel of the early 3D game consoles. The music in Chrono Cross is its most apparent and immediate connection to Chrono Trigger, as some of the music is straight from Chrono Trigger, like the battle victory theme. There are plenty of tracks original to Cross though, and they all sound great. You can tell the same composer did both games, as they have a familiar and fantastic sound. I loved Chrono Trigger, and still do, and I have been finding so far that Chrono Cross is a worthy successor. I cannot wait to see how this story will tie back into the major events of Chrono Trigger, and how the story will evolve from where I currently am in it. I will continue to enjoy the tactical combat and learning what elements to slot for each battle, and how best to use the element system. Finally, I will continue to enjoy the fantastic environments and emotional musical scores as I progress through the game. If you are a Chrono Trigger fan, but haven't played Cross yet, I think you owe it to yourself to pick up this remaster and play it. You will not be disappointed. Thanks for watching, and keep on gaming.